What's up, everybody? Um, let me know if you can hear me and see me okay. Looks like everything is working good on my end. But uh, y'all let me know <clears throat> if you don't hear me. And um, yeah, I see we got a few people in there, so I'm just going to sit here and play a little bit. <clears throat> Make sure my guitar and my vocals and everything are coming through. That's good. So, sorry about last week. Anybody who tuned in, I was supposed to go live um, last week. And I had some last minute technical difficulties. So, uh, like right at the last minute. And it was a fiasco, so I couldn't go live. So, I'm going this week to make up for last week. So, thank you guys for tuning in today. Um, I'm just going to do what I was planning on doing last week, which is... Uh, doing a little uh, tinkering with PodGo. Uh, and I'm using specifically PodGo Wireless so you guys can see my little, I've got the little wireless bug in there. And uh, got a good signal going, it's pretty fun. I haven't used the PodGo Wireless that much uh, outside of doing just a few demos. So it's pretty fun having the bug, the bug back. <laughs> And uh, something I specifically wanted to do today was use some IRs. So those of you that use uh, PodGo, I don't know, I know a lot of you guys are probably already hip to, um, you know, using different IRs and stuff. But uh, what I did was, uh, I'll jump over here to my PodGo edit screen, so hopefully you can see that pretty good. <clears throat> Uh, I just made this preset and it's kind of like an all around just nice rock preset but I used uh, one of the IRs from the Allure pack and I honestly kind of used a few different IRs from the Allure pack. They all sound pretty good. I used the Kali uh, from the Allure pack specifically because this preset I used uh, or that I created I'm using um, the Kali Texas Channel 1 so it's like the Lone Star which I, I have an actual Lone Star uh, half stack, I guess. It's got a 212 cabinet and then the, the head. So I thought, oh, this is something I'm kind of familiar with. It's pretty cool. Although using the Lone Star model on PodGo is about 10 times easier than using the actual amp. <laughs> Just if you've ever messed with a Lone Star, you know it's got a lot of buttons and bells and whistles. But it's a great amp and it sounds really good. And so, yeah, that's why I'm picking this guy. So I'll just start, I created a few snapshots here and I'll put this on the custom tone page afterwards for anybody who wants to download this, this patch. Uh, you just need to make sure you have the Allure pack downloaded as well, which is free for you guys. So, you know, check that out. 
But uh, yeah, let's just get started. I'm on my first snapshot here, and this one, you know, I've got this on the snapshot one, or just like the rhythm patch. And uh, obviously I'm using the uh, Cali Texas Channel One. You'll notice the drive, the settings on the drive and everything. I got the treble pulled down quite a bit, just for whatever reason it seemed a little bright to me. So I, I've got the bass and, and mid way up. I just like a dark amp sound, especially with anything that kind of tends to have a fendery sound. And Mesa Boogie's kind of, you know, kind of like all roads lead to Fender when it comes to like Mesas and Marshalls and stuff. And Fenders sound great, but some, you know, like a Fender Twin or something, to me, they just kind of sound a little too bright sometimes. So I compensated for that by just rolling way off on the uh, treble. So right now, the way I have my guitar set, let me see, can you guys see my guitar? Uh, I'm on the, I'm on the humbucker setting and uh, just on the on the neck position. It has a tuner as well, but you know the guitar was in tune when I first got it, so it should be fine. position as well in fact I was probably using the single coil when I made this patch because I'm just these days I really just can't get enough of a single coil sound so and I've just got a coil tap on here so I can go in and out of that single coil said I'm using one of the cabs from the Allure pack so here's the Cali V30 that I'm using right now but I have all of the Allure pack on here so you know if we can we can kind of go through and, and listen to some different sounds um, this US Deluxe which is you know from like, like a Fender Deluxe reverb it sounds really good as well See how that sounds. A little darker, so maybe I'll go over to the to the bridge position. They all sound pretty good. Um, that's a nice one. Maybe the 
tweed, see how that one sounds. So anyway, I'll just go back to the one I started with. Um, whoops. There we go. Cool. What's up, Nick Bell? Are they not on? Are you not hearing the IRs? I hear them over here. It's not a wireless microphone. It's a, um, it's the, just the, the G10 wireless transmitter. So you guys can see that. This guy. That's that question is for Christian. So, so yeah. I mean, I guess you could use a wireless microphone <laughs> in some situations. But yeah, this the the Pod Go just has the wireless receiver built into it. So, um, it, all I need is the G10, which comes with it, and I just pop it in, and there I go. And it works good in, in most situations. Sometimes in a room where there's a whole lot of wireless or just electronic stuff in general, um, it may it may sound it may have a little interference, um, but that's going to be with any any kind of wireless type stuff. Just when you have too much, I guess, too many waves going through a room. It's just going to be, um, uh, you're going to have a little interference. But right now, I don't have any any problems with this. So everything is sounding good over here on my end. Uh, let me see. <laughs> Paul, I didn't switch to the greenback. I'm sorry, man. Uh, anyway, so I'm back on this, uh, the, the Cali. In fact, I'm just going to go come out of this and go back in make sure everything is reset the way I had it um, yeah. so when I go back to I'm going to go back to my clean sound here well you guys have heard the clean enough I guess uh, it's just real I do have some cool things going uh, for this snapshot. Actually, I guess I was on snapshot one, which was rhythm, which is real simple. But I do have some nice reverb there, and so I'm using this dynamic hall. Let me go back to my, uh, so you guys can see that. I'm using this uh, dynamic hall reverb, and if you guys don't uh, haven't tried that yet, I mean it's it's really nice. It's like my new favorite reverb uh, from like some of the the more recent updates. And I have it turned down pretty low right now, but hopefully you can still hear it. guy this this is not part of this particular snapshot but I've got a little opto trim put in here so uh, sorry about that I use this for everything normally because it smooths out my playing and it kind of causes me to use less of uh, this this kind of thing here you know how guitar players <laughs> want to do this with everything and it just that you know, it's like a, a blues player, a rock player. She likes, we can't play a note without kind of doing this goofy tremolo bend thing. And I don't know why that is. I don't know why we developed that habit, but it's something that I know I struggle with and I see a lot of people struggle with it. And I've also 
personally found that when I use a tremolo, not only does it kind of soften the attack, you know, the edges of, of what I'm playing, but because of that little warble that you get with a tremolo, it kind of takes away my natural tendency to want to put a bunch of vibrato on everything. So, and as you can see, it's not a real radical tremolo. It's just, um, it just kind of eases into each chord. So I thought that was worth worth talking about. And then I've also got some digital delay, which I'll get into that with this next snapshot here. So I'm going to go over to my second snapshot, and that turns everything on. I've got my delay, my tremolo. Uh, it even engages this uh, EQ that I'm, you know, I don't always use something like this, but you have that option with a pod go, so you might as well use it. So it kicks all that on, plus it kicks on my overdrive pedal, which I have the Tima distortion pedal set up. And here's the, you can kind of see the settings of it. I don't have it set up real radical. I think that's how it comes as soon as you pop it in there. And I usually just think that that's fine. <laughs> to the humbugger to get you know when you go over to your humbugger pickup it just seems like it gives you a little more saturation and obviously it's quieter but notice how those notes all kind of swell in because of this tremolo that I have and uh, just for your information if you want to see how I have the tremolo set of course I have it set to quarter note so I can tap in whatever tempo I want but I like to have the depth at about 70% and the mix about 70% and that keeps it from being too much. Uh, you know, I want it to just kind of add to what I've already got. I don't want. I don't want to just saturate everything with tremolo. <laughs> your setup um, thanks Steven <laughs> uh, so Christian um, you're asking about my setup uh, you probably understand that already though because I've been talking about it for a while so I'll just um, recap if you're curious if you missed like the first part like what amp I'm using it's uh, this Texas Channel 1 the Cali Texas Channel 1 and I've got one of the Allure IRs in there, and that particular Allure IR is this Cali V30, Vintage 30, and those are available on the Line 6 website. So I would say go over there and grab those, because what you'll need to do is to use a patch like this, um, since I'm using a, a, an IR that's not stock, if you have a stock pod go, you'll wanna go over there, download the Allure pack, uh, it should be free, and then um, when you 
then, then load the Allure pack onto your Podgo using the Podgo editor, which is what you guys are looking at right now. This this screen is the is the editor, the desktop editor, and then you can add all that into your Podgo, and you can use the factory cabinets if you want to, or you can throw in one of these third party IRs. Well, I guess it's not really a third party IR, is it? If it came from Line Six, that's not third party. That's our own, but you understand what I'm saying. So that's the meat and potatoes. If you missed everything else I've covered since you've been on here, I think, Christian. So hopefully that uh, answered your question. And then, yeah, you had asked about the wireless, and it's just the G10, the Relay G10, which is, you know, plugs in, it charges. Uh, when you plug it into the guitar input of the PodGo wireless, it charges uh, the G10 transmitter. So you're good to go. Uh, okay, so let's see. Have I covered everything on here? I'll just kind of go through each. I have this this one other snapshot, and this one is uh, okay. It's just almost the same as the lead. I think I may just have. In fact, it looks like maybe I've only got three snapshots on here. I was thinking one of them kicked on like a little more uh, drive from the amplifier. So let's see. Here's a. Yeah, this one doesn't, there's not quite as much crunch there. Honestly, we probably don't need um, tremolo or delay. So you turn the drive up on this on this guy, and it really sounds good. Um, let me see. I have no idea. Yeah, Stephen. Um, Stephen said, "Thanks for the tip on the Allure IRs. Had no idea. Cheers. Cheers to you, Stephen. Thanks for the kind words too. And um, yeah, uh, just go go to the website. Uh, or actually, I think it's Nick Bell can probably put that link in here if he's still listening. Um, it's not." you go to it's like the allure pack has its own uh page so um if nick is still there maybe he can throw that in the comments so everybody else can go get it and those irs they work on the pod go pod go wireless the helix you know they're, they're just they're impulse responses so all of all of our stuff you know the the uh all the hx stuff uh, other than the hx effects of course um and then the pod go stuff they all will take you know impulse responses so there's not like an impulse response just for pod go or just for helix yeah yeah there you go this is super easy thanks nick for putting that link in there awesome always good to have my bro nick bell looking out for me he is awesome so um there you have it not a lot to be said about this thing other than that I think this preset sounds great. And just a little FYI for anybody who may be curious today, I know you can't see it, but I'm actually using my Catalyst, uh, my Catalyst 100 uh, amp to monitor everything. So, you know, you have a couple of cool options. I'll just mention this. So those of you that may have a Catalyst already, oh gosh, what is this? What is this? We're hearing a direct feed. Oh, okay. So actually, that's I'm gonna post your 
comment here so everybody can see it, Alan. Is the playback we are hearing a direct feed or is it the sound from the monitor? I've struggled a bit with the sound changing when switching between headphones and direct, etc. Okay, so I was actually just kind of talking about that. So first of all, I'm what I'm monitoring the sound in this room with is my Catalyst 100. Uh, amplifier. The Catalyst is pretty cool. It's got HX models on it as well. So if you just want to use it as a standalone amp, which I have done, I've used it on a few gigs already. It's got, you know, HX family amps and effects built into it and it sounds great and it's pretty powerful. You know, there's a 100 watt version, there's a 60 watt version, and a 200 watt version. So, but what you're hearing right now is my Pod Go Wireless going uh, USB into my computer and then I have it set for this live stream to where the audio just comes straight from that so unless I did something wrong but I'm pretty sure I did it right you know sometimes I wake up in a new world every day so I don't know but you should be hearing direct audio from PodGo not the room audio um, the catalyst can be set as a flat response monitor sort of like a power cab Basically, it turns into a power cab, so you can run your either PodGo or Helix or whatever you're using, whatever you're using, you can go into that and it'll, it'll be a, serve as a powered cabinet for that, and you can use your amp IRs coming from your PodGo or Helix or whatever. Um, or, what's cool about the PodGo is it has a dedicated amp out, and what that does is if you come if you plug from the amp out into your amplifier what it does is instead of it changes the way it works you know the amplifier is not serving as a flat response now you're actually just bypassing the amp IR in the pod go and using the sound from the amplifier that you're plugging into then you go from the direct outs on your device, Pod Go in this case, so you have a left and a right, or you can just go left mono, and the guy running sound, you know, controlling the board, gets your entire preset on Pod Go. So he gets the amp IR that you have set to Pod Go, and he can totally manipulate the volume and everything, for better or for worse. You know, we're always at the mercy of the sound guy. But that's really cool because if you're used to hearing your tube amp on stage, and a lot of us are, I mean, there's nothing better than just having an amp on stage for a guitar player. You know, I know we're all trying to evolve in, with these 21st century products, and I, I feel like I've kind of evolved a, a, quite a bit. I've gotten really used to how the Helix sounds or Pod Go. I actually just love it because I can get like a super cranked you know, half stack sound and turn the volume way down and I can record with it and everything else uh, or do a live stream like this. So, but if you're not quite there yet, if you're just not comfortable with it, if you have this kind of setup, you know, say you're using, you know, another, some other traditional amplifier from a different brand, you know, a Fender Twin or something like that, you can still run your Pod Go into it and it will bypass the amp IR and you'll hear your Fender Twin with your effects that you have preset in, in your Pod Go. And then you can run the dedicated, you know, direct outs from Pod Go into the board. I know I said that already, I'm just repeating myself. And the people out front actually hear the, the full processed patch that you created. And then the, the guy, if you, if you have somebody like an engineer running your, your PA system or something, he can control your volume and stuff, and you can control your amp volume on stage, and it doesn't really affect what the people out front here. Although I'm sure the singer or the drummer or somebody will complain. I just feel like that's in the nature of people. They just want to complain about the guitar player. So, you know, I always try to be the guitar player who doesn't complain about stuff because I know what it's like to have everybody complaining that you're too loud or you're too busy or this or that. But that's for a different pod, uh, a different podcast or a different stream. Um, so yeah, we'll talk about that uh, on my Instagram or something one day. But uh, yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. I'll do a little, give it a little more playing here. So right now I'm back on my lead channel and uh, I've got, you know, uh, let's see, do I have my delay and stuff going? Yeah. Very, a very little 
amount of delay. You don't want too much delay and reverb at the same time. <laughs> tuning in. I hope you dig that. Um, thanks, Alan. Thanks, Nick Bell. Uh, we are a retailer from Nepal. Need to import more products. Please let us help. Hmm. Cool. Um, yeah, thank you, guys. And um, stick a fork in me. I'm done. I think next week we'll have my good buddy and brother from another mother, Nick Bell. Um, so you guys be sure to tune into that. And uh, thank you all for tuning in. Hey, Y'all, please uh, follow me on Instagram and check out my YouTube channel because I need some more. Uh, I need some more love on social media. All right, see you guys soon. Peace.